this one I'll come in even faster. So I'm in fourth gear. I'm doing about 60 miles per hour. So again, I'll end up straight line braking in, off the foot brake, pull the handbrake, let it slide down to second gear for the exit. So Good morning, everyone. My name is Brent. Welcome to the Team O'Neill YouTube channel. Today, we're gonna to learn how to do some handbrake turns in this wonderful Ford Fiesta. We typically get into handbrake turns on day three of our, our curriculum on our class, and you use these techniques to really rotate around tight corners at a low speed, uh, basically when you're not able to go fast enough for left foot braking to transfer enough weight to turn the vehicle. Uh, that's when you typically use a handbrake. Uh, we mostly do them in front wheel drive cars, but you can use them in all drive lines, front wheel drive, all wheel drive, rear wheel drive. There's a few differences that we'll cover inside the car with that. But yeah, with all that being said, uh, next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hop in this Ford Fiesta behind us and I'll show you how it's done inside the car. All right, now giving you guys a slow demonstration of these handbrake turns. When you're coming into a tight corner, you're looking all the way through the turn. Most times, you're gonna to wanna to turn the wheel in first and then you pull the handbrake. Now, once you go to the handbrake, there's a couple things you need to, to be aware of. Make sure you push the button in, hold the button in the whole time so the handbrake doesn't actually lock up on you because uh, then it's gonna be a real nightmare trying to unlock it mid corner and still try to stay on the road. So always make sure you uh, press that handbrake button in and hold it in the entire time. The other thing with these uh, techniques, if you are going into a corner a bit too fast and you need some straight line braking or trail braking, make sure you get that done pretty early and then you release that foot brake while you're pulling the handbrake. You don't wanna be on both pedals at the same time because you're gonna run the risk of locking up all four tires. And if you do that, you're only gonna understeer and go straight. Now, as far as your turning goes, uh, going into one of these corners, the tightness of the, of the corner is actually gonna dictate how much you steer. But typically, if it's a right-hander, you don't really wanna turn much more than this. You don't wanna do any palming of the wheel. Again, you're locking the rear tires with the handbrake, so that's gonna help you rotate. Uh, so your front tire should still be rolling. When you make a tight left-hand turn, you don't wanna really turn much more than 90 degrees because again, you don't wanna end up palming the wheel. It's gonna be very difficult to correct the, the slide on the exit. And when you go around the corner, we're gonna demonstrate it up over, the, up over a crest here on a right-hand turn. I'll turn into roughly this much, and then I wanna modulate the handbrake, uh, basically so I don't ever have to counter steer more than this as well, because again, I don't wanna see any palming for the exit. And there's another thing that we can talk about as well as we're going through a corner, is maybe downshifting for the exit. So in this particular vehicle, you know, the ST, it's got a decent amount of power. So if I go into that tight hairpin at third gear, I really need second gear for the end of it. So I'll make sure I stay on the road first, get the corner done, and then I'll worry about the gear shift. So here I'll brake a little bit coming in, turn, and then pull the handbrake, let it rotate around, and then clutch in, grab the gear for the exit, and then out you go. All right, this one I'll come in even faster. So I'm in fourth gear, I'm doing about 60 miles per hour. So again, I'll end up straight line braking in, off the foot brake, pull the handbrake, let it slide down to second gear for the exit. So again, you don't always have to row down third, second. You are allowed to skip gears in a uh, H pattern gearbox. Now with the sequential gearbox, if anyone has a you know fancy race car, then you can get all the downshifts done beforehand and then worry about the handbrake. All right, so we've done a lot of situations and I've shown you that turning in and then pulling the handbrake will work good for a relatively you know, easier, faster type handbrake corner. Uh, but if you're ever on like a really tight, full 180 degree turn, or even uh, oftentimes on pavement, you actually wanna pull the handbrake first and then turn in. So that's what I'll end up demonstrating here for you around the, a very tight, you know, just a single cone. So again, it's a, it's a lot slower speed than what we were doing earlier. So I'll make sure I come in a little bit slow. Again, I'll handbrake, then turn in, hold the handbrake. Now you don't have to clutch in in a front wheel drive vehicle because you're not actually locking your drive wheels. 
but I often do it on these really tight corners just to give me the option to find the lower gear if I need. Uh, if you ever try this in a rear wheel drive car, you actually have to clutch in, otherwise you're locking your drive wheels and you can just stall the engine. Um, in all wheel drive car, it kind of depends on your center differential if you have to clutch in or not. But typically if you end up wanting to drop to a lower gear, you're gonna have to use the clutch unless you have a sequential gearbox. So again, I'm coming in and I'm gonna handbrake first, then turn, and then clutch, first gear, and out you go. All right guys, so that was a quick rundown on handbrake turns. Hopefully you guys learned something about watching this video. If you wanna learn more, check out some of our past videos. And if you wanna take a class here, check us out at timoneal.com. Hey, this is Chris Sear, CEO and partner at Team O'Neill. Thank you so much for visiting our channel. If you want to join our community, please comment, like, and subscribe. And if you want to learn more about us or book a course, please visit teamoneill.com. We look forward to connecting with you.